Hello! Today's stories come from r slash true off my chest. Today we have two longer stories with multiple updates that are stranger than fiction. You might be saying to yourself, Cece, I thought you don't do surviving infidelity stories. And you'd be 100% right. They both start on that theme and then, oof, go to some unexpected places you cannot miss. Our first is, my husband got a paternity test on our daughter, five-year-old female, and it came back negative but I have never cheated. Now he thinks our relationship is a lie and wants to divorce. What do I do? I don't know how it happened and I haven't been able to stop crying all day. I never cheated. I love my husband. We've been together since college and he's the love of my life. He's handsome and kind and while I've slept with two other people, both were before we got together. There is no other potential father for our daughter. We were married already and actively trying for a baby. I never cheated. I never would cheat. And I don't know why he took that stupid test because I would never, ever cheat. But it came back negative. And now he thinks he's not her dad. I don't know how to convince him it was a faulty test. And I'm so scared. These past few months, it's like he's become someone completely different from the man I married. He's cold and suspicious. He kept demanding to see my phone and wouldn't tell me why. And I showed him at first, but eventually told him I wouldn't anymore unless he explained why. He's been distant with our daughter, too. He stays in his office for hours on end, and I don't know what he's doing. I did not cheat. He accused me this morning, saying he'd done the test after realizing that our daughter's eyes are brown, wouldn't naturally come from ours, both blue, and that he wanted me to get out of the house. I didn't leave, and he locked me out of our bedroom, and now I'm in my daughter's room. This is terrifying. What should I do? Edit. The specific advice I want is how I can prove I'm innocent and how to make sure this relationship works. I want to keep my family together at all costs. Also, I just had a conversation with my husband. He's out of his room now and we discussed some things. I told him again that I would never cheat and started talking about a list I made of tests I want done, but he told me that he didn't want to hear it right now. We're going to have a longer conversation tomorrow, and he said that he still loves our daughter and he won't try to keep me out of the house or our room for now. I asked him to hug me and he did. I'm scared that I won't be able to convince him. I just want our family to go back to normal. How can I be a good wife and support his needs while proving my innocence? Update. Hi, everyone. First off, I wanted to thank everyone who reached out. My original post got so much attention. It was hard to get to everything, but I ended up making a list of plans and tests I wanted to get done. My husband was, understandably, distrustful of me for a while, but he apologized for the way he acted, which I didn't need, and said that he wouldn't try to kick me out of our home. He did say, though, that if every test came back and I'd cheated, then he was going to go scorched earth. We did a few tests, blood paternity tests for him and me and our daughter, and we had an appointment with a chimerism specialist coming up. But that got cancelled because, well, some of you guessed it, but my daughter is not biologically mine either. I don't know how this happened, but a police officer came to our house and took our statements and were suing the hospital where I gave birth. I don't know what happened to my baby, and that is terrifying. I have my husband back, but my whole world was still upended, and I just wish he'd never taken that stupid test. I've been sleeping in my daughter's room, and I'm so afraid that she's going to be taken away from me. But at the same time, I want to know where my biological daughter is, and if she's okay. I pray to God she's okay. My daughter still doesn't know the details, and we've been trying to keep this quiet. The last thing we need is a big scandal. I don't want people who know us to look at her differently. She deserves better than that. She's such a good kid, and she's not some spectacle to be gawked at. If we can find her birth family, I have no idea what we'll do. I guess the best case scenario would be to get a bigger house and all live together, but I don't know if we can afford that, or if they'd go for that, or even if we'll be able to locate them, or if I'm just crazy. This whole situation is crazy. I don't know anyone else who's been in a situation like this. I mean, are there support groups for parents of kids who got mixed up? I googled and nothing came up. Literally, all I'm getting are tabloid articles from trashy magazines that slap the faces of innocent kids on the same pages as celebrity scandals and fiction. How do we tell our daughter? I mean, we can't tell her now. She'll tell the kids at school and then it'll be everywhere. But we have to say something. I don't know what I ever did to deserve this. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. I wonder how the husband feels about having taken the test. What do you think? Is OP right? Would ignorance have been bliss in this case? 
I really do wonder how things landed. I didn't include it because it is touched on in the comments, but OP also posted to r slash legal advice after this. There wasn't any new info, and unsurprisingly, the only advice was to get off Reddit and see a lawyer. Let's check out the comments where people share their hospital experiences post-birth. Apparently, this is a common concern among new parents. JDRO shared, This is why when my daughter was born four months ago, me, my wife, and the baby each had matching bracelets put on by the hospital immediately. The baby actually had three, one tied to her medical records for medication, and two identifying ones, one on the wrist and one on the leg. She also never left the room without one of us. Hospital took this very seriously. Self-Aware Square added, Before my kids had fully taken their first breath, they had a sticker glued to their leg with mom's information. One was a C-section, and I am not joking, the sticker person was hovering right next to the bed, ready to slap that thing on the second the baby was pulled out. None of the babies left the room until both of us, plus the nurse, checked bands and stickers to ensure they matched. The stickers are skin-safe adhesive and waterproof. They didn't peel off until almost two weeks later, after we oiled the bejesus out of them. I guess it prevents bands from falling off or being cut off. Also, there's an electronic chip that got clamped onto their umbilical cord stump. It would set off an alarm if the baby passed through any exit door on the floor. Apparently, our hospital is serious about security. Someone shared, When we left the hospital after the birth of our last child, I opened the envelope containing the picture of our kid they put on the bassinet to help identify the baby. And I noticed she looked a bit darker skinned in the pic than in real life, but chalked it up to bad lighting and my extreme exhaustion. About an hour later, we got a call from the hospital that they had mixed up the pics with someone's Indian baby. Husband went back to the hospital to exchange pics and joked that we had at least gotten the right baby. Right? Right? Fundiga said, I thought it was going to be a medical thing like chimerism or something. This is much worse. Miss for Misanthrope said, that or the lab that processed the test botched the results. But this is just, oh, my heart hurts for them. Have a seat, Chris Hansen said. I thought it was going to be the husband lying about the test because he wanted out. Reddit has ruined me. Our next story is split into two parts because the comments on this wild ride can be missed. It starts with, I'm full of regrets, believing that my husband cheated on me when he didn't. Cheating is something that I have always had strong opinions about. I have been cheated on before and it sucked. Everyone knows that I don't forgive cheaters. So when my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, staged an elaborate scheme about my husband cheating, I ended the relationship. My relationship, unfortunately, wasn't the only one that was affected. My sister-in-law, Lisa, 32, her best friend, Emma, 32, and my husband, Jamie, 29, were best friends growing up. Emma got married early when she was 20. Her husband was abusive. She has two children with him. She got divorced 10 years later and she was finally free from his abuse. She suffered a lot, however, and was, probably still is, in therapy, her and her children. I, 30 years old, met Jamie four years ago. We got married two years later. Everything was just awesome. What I didn't know was that Emma wanted Jamie and Lisa made it her mission, when Emma finally got divorced, to bring her brother and best friend together. I didn't know any of this, so I never knew there was a hidden agenda when I, a few months into my marriage, overheard Lisa talking about how Jamie was cheating on me with a married colleague of his. In hindsight, I can tell it was staged, because she was saying unnecessary details and was very loud. She meant for me to hear it. I confronted her then and there, and she played very flustered and apologized and begged me not to ruin my marriage. She told me Jamie loved me, and she never wanted to lose me as a sister. But at the same time, she provided me with pictures and texts. They were all photoshopped of my husband and his colleague. She begged me not to mention where I found out. And I was grateful for her support and promised her not to expose her as the source. I confronted my husband with everything and he adamantly refused to admit to anything. It hurt me more that he never admitted nor apologized, ever. He asked me where I got this from, but I kept my promise and told him it was an anonymous tip. I also went so far that I contacted the colleague's husband. At the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. The colleague is this very beautiful woman that my husband worked very closely with many hours a day. I was a bit jealous of that, and I confided my fears with Lisa. She used it against me. 
I asked for divorce, and the colleague's husband did too. After that, Lisa, who I thought was my friend, who called me her sister, disappeared from my life, like I never existed. Even when I bumped into her, she was short with me and indifferent. Months went by, and I was still heartbroken, processing the separation. My husband stopped trying to make me see reason and agreed to divorce. He said he wanted to move on. I started having doubts. Why is Lisa doing this now? She was my friend and wanted the best for me, yet now she didn't even answer my texts? I follow both her and Emma on Insta, and I started seeing how Emma and my husband gradually started hanging out. At least once a week, Emma or Lisa shared stories about my husband with Emma and her children. What I did next is very questionable, and yet I don't regret it at all. I was desperate, and I needed the truth. I was still very good friends with Lisa's on-again, off-again boyfriend's Mike sister. I told her my doubts and everything. I told her that Lisa was my source, that my husband was cheating, and that I'm starting to doubt everything, and that I needed her help to unearth the truth. Mike was easier to persuade to help me than I expected. He had Lisa's passcodes, and he went through her messages with Emma. And there was everything. They have plotted everything. They used my idiocy and insecurity and made me throw the best thing that has ever happened to me. He sent me all the proof I needed, even the original photos they used to Photoshop my husband with his colleague. My world was turned upside down again, and I went down a deeper depression. I stayed in bed, called in sick for two weeks. I have not only ruined my life, but also another family. I don't know why I'm writing here if I want advice or just to vent. I don't blame anyone but my stupidity for ruining my marriage. I should have trusted my husband and the love he's shown me. I should have been honest with him about everything and where I got the news that he was cheating from. I should have not gone to hurt the colleague and her family just because I thought her beautiful. She has since quit her job and moved, but I still had her husband's contact information. I had to at least apologize. We met and I told him everything. He was so angry with me. He was crying and yelling at me and all I could think was that I deserved every insult he threw my way. I found the colleague on Instagram and DM'd her everything and a long apology. She didn't answer me. I don't know if I should tell my husband too. I know I don't deserve him at all and I know that he doesn't want me anymore but maybe he should just know what Emma is doing and what she's capable of doing. He deserves to know the truth. Maybe I could start with reassuring him that I'm not trying to win him back. I'm just trying to help him understand and apologize. I need to apologize for everything. I don't know. Who are these people? This is straight out of a soap opera. Let's quickly check out some comments before we move on to the update. There's a brief one from OP and some more general ones that question if manipulative people like this really exist. Ava Mia said, of course you should show your ex-husband. Whilst you're at it, show all the proof Mike sent you. OP replied, that's what I want to do. I'm not sure. I've made it very clear to him that I didn't want anything to do with him anymore, so I don't know if I should ask to meet him or just send him a text with everything. Avamia replied, personally, I would arrange to meet him. If he says no, text him the proof. Captain Tack said, this can't be real. No fracking way is this real. This requires too many sociopaths to actually be real. If my brother had done this to me and I found out, he would be dead the next day. And that poor innocent family upended and destroyed as a result? I don't know how they could survive that or even come close to reconciling. This had better be some sort of creative writing BS. I have a crayon said, I had a group of friends that would go to this extent. It's insane the kind of people that are out there. Wajarki shared, not too many, just two, the sister and her best friend. Two people conniving for something hard enough can warp the mind of one person enough and then the damage is done. I should know. Fabricating evidence, manipulation, Covering alibis, that's easy enough for one determined person, and substantially easier with more people, if they all fall in line to the leader. The fallout only has to hit once, and hard, and it smolders for life. And now for the update. Update. I'm full of regrets, believing that my husband cheated on me when he didn't. Hi. I now have an update. Thank you for being so supportive. I honestly didn't expect that given how long and boring my story was. I remember being so desperate and wanting to tell everything from the beginning and put it out there. Maybe to try and make excuses for myself and for what I did. I appreciate that you wanted to help. I decided not to meet up with Jamie. Every time I tried to text him and ask for a meeting, I panicked. That wasn't a good sign at all. I wanted him to know everything, in detail, and I tend to be all over the place when I'm panicking. So I decided to email him instead. 
I made a lot of drafts, cross-checked all the information, and waited a whole day before sending, adding some details here and there that I've forgotten to include. I sent him all the manipulated pictures and the original, every screenshot Mike sent me from Lisa and Emma's conversations. I made it clear, however, that I wasn't trying to manipulate him to have me back, because I knew that what I did was unforgivable, but that I wanted to warn him about who he's dealing with. I told him that I've been watching Emma and Lisa's Instagram, and I've seen that he was getting cozier with Emma. I wanted him to know all the facts if he was dating her. This took all my energy to write. Just the thought of him dating Emma, I mean, I can't. I texted him that I've sent him an important email. He didn't answer me. On Wednesday, when I came back from work, Lisa, Emma, and Emma's two children were waiting for me outside of my building. When I let them in, stupid, stupid me, Lisa started yelling and threatening me. She told me to call and tell Jamie and Mike that I have made up all of this because I'm a pathetic loser. She told me I didn't want her as an enemy because she would make my life sour, believe me. You don't want me to make destroying your already miserable life my mission. Emma just smiled the whole time. She later said that my husband always had a crush on her and that he wouldn't believe my nonsense because he could finally be with her. The thing is, it felt like Lisa was more angry that Mike knew what she did rather than her brother, and she really was annoyed about Emma and told her to shut up all the time. I couldn't get them out of my apartment, so I just left and called Jamie. I told him that they were at my place and that I couldn't get them out. Fifteen minutes later, I saw them leave. Jamie texted then that he wanted to come over, if I was all right with it. Hashtag yes. He told me that he was very hurt that I would doubt him like this and believe rumors. I told him everything again without panicking. I told him that I loved and trusted Lisa. She was like my sister. And I asked him to put himself in my shoes. And if he happened to hear Lisa talk about me being unfaithful, would he have had any doubts in his loving sister's intentions? He stayed the night and left next morning. We have been texting several times a day and talking on the phone and FaceTime every night since. He says that he loves me, but that he doesn't know what to do. He is very hurt by his sister and Emma, of course, but even by me. He hasn't talked about canceling the divorce process yet. I will just have to wait, and that's understandable. I've turned his life upside down twice in such a short period. On a happier note, my husband's colleague and her husband are back together. My husband met with them and apologized. I've already told them everything, but my husband felt the need to apologize personally. Mike has ended it with Lisa. Lisa and Emma's relationship is very strained. Both have blocked me from Instagram, of course, but apparently Lisa is blaming Emma for Mike leaving her, and Emma has tried to throw Lisa under the bus by telling Jamie she was innocent in all of this. I really hope my husband forgives me, and I promise that I will make it up to him and love him, hashtag forever. What a tough situation. I hope Jamie and OP get back together. This is all around just horrible. OP was trying to keep a confidence of someone she thought was a friend, but at a very high price. Too high. I have to think things would have gone differently if she had just shared who she got the info from. And this must have been a nightmare for Jamie. Let's check out the comments before we wrap up, where OP answers a few questions before deleting her account to hopefully put this behind her and live happily ever after. Lost 1010 said, he doesn't believe Emma, right? That she was innocent and only Lisa was involved? Also, were they dating or just hanging out? OP replied, no, he doesn't believe Emma. I sent him screenshots of hundreds of texts between Lisa and Emma. Also, he didn't like her hitting on him when he believed she was my friend too. I asked him about the crush and he said it was when he was 15 or 16. Not now. Ancient Awareness said, marriage counseling might be a good idea if you both want this to work. OP replied, I have suggested this. He just smiled at me because it was something that he suggested before our breakup, and I refused. Because at the time, I thought nothing can fix infidelity. Awkward Bugger said, You could also consider individual therapy or counseling for both of you to help you process your emotions and the whole experience. Dark Macaria said, Oh my days, what an ordeal. I hate such toxic people. Jamie was with you, had all the opportunities to get with the other lass, but didn't. The only way they could see a way in was to break him down and get to him while he was vulnerable. It's awful, and insecurities are horrific things. I do hope you get it sorted, lovely, as you were horribly manipulated in an awful game. OP replied, Emma believed that he couldn't pursue her because she was married. 
He has admitted that he had a crush on her when he was a teen before she got married. When she divorced her husband, Jamie was already married to me. Dark Macaria added, ah, I see. Either way, it wasn't meant to be, and she should have just gotten over it. Not ruined your marriage for her own gain. I don't know how she sleeps at night. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.